Hey, this is Joe from Home Studio Corner. A few weeks ago, a friend of mine sent me a link to a video of a channel that somehow I must be living under a rock I didn't know existed. So the channel is called House of Kush, and the video is by a guy named Gregory Scott. You've probably already seen it. I'm late to the party. Great channel, great content. Go subscribe. But the name of the video that my friend sent to me is called Balanced Mixes Are Boring Mixes. And the reason my friend sent it to me, he said, I want to challenge you on your stance on balanced mixes. So I'm already a little defensive. So I open it up and I start watching. And the, my first instinct is to make it completely about me and to get defensive uh, because he's talking about something that I say a lot. I talk a lot about how balance is good. We're, you know, They called mix engineers balance engineers back in the day, whether it's volume balance or left to right panning balance or frequency balance or dynamic balance. I don't know what that was. Balance is such an important thing when it comes to mixing and making music. And I realized as I continued watching his video, it, once I got past my classic narcissism of making it about me as if he's trying to call me out on something, I just listened and I realized, oh, he's making a really good point. So I'm not going to try to summarize the video completely here because it's he he's he gives some great information then he gives an exercise to kind of prove his point which is brilliant uh so go watch that video but um generally his point was the goal with mixing shouldn't be to make everything the same uh to make everything audible and we can hear everything uh, if anything that's maybe a starting point but it's certainly not the end goal for a mix and so it kind of it made me think the word balance to me means one thing, but I realize I might be part of the problem because it, it means different things. Because when you think about balancing a scale, right, we don't do it anymore, but like I give you this many you know coins and you balance it against the thing to make sure I've paid you enough back in the day, like a thousand years ago. Uh, th that It was about being equal and exact and the same. And when I think about balance and mixing, I'm not thinking about sameness. I'm thinking about everything goes together. Um, and I want to make that clear because it's a really important point. And I've said the word balance so many times, uh, I can't go back and add in this little disclaimer in there, but I want to do it now and kind of clear the air. That balance doesn't just mean sameness, especially when it comes to mixing. It really almost doesn't mean that at all. Think about you're making a cake. Do you balance the ingredients? The same amount of of baking powder as flour? No, of course not. There's different levels to create a nice balanced flavor that tastes good and sounds, well, doesn't your cake doesn't sound good, but you get where I'm going with the metaphor. Um, same thing with mixing. If mixing was all about making everything the same level, we could do that with computers, right? Computer, I'm going to dump these tracks into you. I want you to set them off the exact same level and spit them out to me. Whammo, finished mix. We all know that's not what a finished mix is. We all generally intuitively know that the the little shaker track in this huge rock song shouldn't be as loud as the lead vocal or the snare drum. Like it needs to sit in the mix in a certain spot that blends with everybody else. Here's a scenario that, that helps me when I'm thinking about balance. Uh, in college, I was in a vocal group. It was three guys and four four girls, I believe. And we did like different like jazz standards and a lot of like intricate, you know, six, seven part harmony stuff. It's crazy. Um, and some of it was acapella. And once we had rehearsed all semester, we, we got in the studio and tried to record some of those acapella tunes. And we did it through the, just side note, they had a pair of those Coles ribbon mics, the really beautiful, look like hockey pucks, um, set in an bloom line pattern because they're, they're, uh, ribbon mic so they have a figure eight pattern so set up like this like x y but it picks up in both directions and our director uh conductor what do you call him anyway would put us around the microphones to create a cool stereo image so probably like a moon sem semicircle pattern around the mics and then we would sing our acapella songs well we started off with everyone the exact distance from the mics you know three four feet in a circle around the microphones and as we started singing and doing takes, we realized, ah, okay, you sing quieter than everyone else. Either you need to sing a little bit louder or we need to move you closer to the microphones. So that was one person. And another person, um, he just, I loved him, uh, but he just had one volume. Uh, when everyone else sang quiet, he was still blaring at kind of the same volume. And he could get, he'd get louder and quieter, but his just bass kind of starting volume was just a lot louder than everyone else. So 
it, since he you know wouldn't get quieter for whatever reason, um, the solution was to have him step back. So I remember I was in the middle because I was singing a bass part, I know, right? Um, and he was to my left. And by the final take of this song, it was a cool acapella version of um, All My Life by the Beatles. He was probably a good three, four feet behind me. So it had moved back like over there, but in the recording, it actually sounded balanced. Uh, he wasn't way louder than everyone else. So for me, that, that all that to say is when I think about balance, I think about things going well together. In an acapella song like that, we had verses that different, different people took the lead on different verses while everyone else was singing, you know, oohs and ahs. That lead person necessarily has to be louder than everyone else. That's what you expect to happen. If you take a lead guitar solo in the middle of your epic 80s ballad, you want that solo to be louder than everything else so that we hear it. We don't want it to blend. We want it to stand out. And I think that, was, that, that absolutely was Gregory's point, is don't make everything the same because sameness really does get boring. Um, there need to be things that are louder, things that are prominent, things that are stars of the show, and other things that aren't. And then one thing that I'm bad about when I mix is automating those things to happen. So maybe one thing's the star of the show for a section, and then using something like volume automation to bring it down and let somebody else come in and be star of the show. You know who's really good at this? Bluegrass musicians. Sit them around a single omni microphone and watch them just dance around the microphone. They move up for their little lead part and they back up to play rhythm. And they're, in doing so, they're kind of changing the balances between things. And it sounds beautiful because they know if I take a step and a half forward, that's enough increase in volume for my little mandolin part to come through the mix louder than everyone else. And then I pull back and play rhythm where I'm a little more balanced with everyone. So this very well might just be all about semantics. And I guess in some ways it is. But I want to make it clear. I think, Gregory, you nailed it. I don't. We haven't met yet. We should meet one day when the world stops ending with pandemics and whatnot. Um, but you nailed it. The, the goal isn't sameness. Um, and I'm going to be a little more careful in using the word balance henceforth. Uh, because I realize it has a connotation that I, I don't mean to get across, but then I, re I can totally see how people go there. So... That's it for my rambling video response to Gregory's video. Be sure to subscribe to that channel. Um, I've just barely scratched the surface. There seems like there's a lot of good stuff there. Um, tell him I said hi. And that's it for this video. So thank you so much for watching. By the way, if you're not subscribed to this channel, would love for you to subscribe. Um, I got a lot of fun stuff planned for you. I've actually was this morning doing some planning for some bigger videos to do in the coming months. So lots to come. Make sure you don't miss it by subscribing. Uh, and if you want a guide that I put together on mixing, it's called the Five Step Mix Guide. I just revamped it like a few weeks ago. It's all new. I've redone some of the steps because it makes more sense to redo things. The, the way I've done it now feels like the most common sense way to approach a mix. And it's not about telling you where to put your EQ settings. It's about a mindset and an approach, whether you're mixing two tracks or 200. Okay, not 200. Whether you're mixing 2 or 24 or 48, you can apply this same system to any of them, and it'll kind of keep you on track, give you some milestones to shoot for, and help you hit the finish line, which is a big struggle for a lot of folks, myself included. All right, I'm going to cross the finish line of this video now. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.